ok. So, the midterm solutions are posted on uh, Carmen. I do not know how many of you have seen it, but it is there in the files section. In fact, all the solutions are posted there. Uh, midterm samples were also posted, but Imran just informed me that he did not have access to it. So, <coughs> I mean, it is not like he did not see it that there are midterm samples available. So, so now you all know that midterm 2 samples are also available on Carmen. So, please take a look at it. It is coming up in a month. Uh, we were discussing about barrier method, uh, which is basically a method for solving constrained optimization problem. Uh, so let us uh, talk about barrier method and augmented Lagrangian method today. I want to minimize f of x, x is in x and g x is less than equal to 0 or let me write it as g j of x is less than equal to 0, j equals 1 to r and we define the set capital S. x in x such that g x is strictly less than 0 and we define the barrier function b of x as minus summation j log of minus g j x or These are the two barrier functions, inverse barrier function and logarithmic barrier function. Uh, you can come up with your own barrier function. You do not have to stick to these two, but they are widely used in many optimization algorithms. And so the barrier method tries to solve the following problem. xk equals to argmen x in s fx plus epsilon k bx. And the result is xk converges to x star as epsilon k goes to 0. Okay, so bulk of this class, uh, we'll focus on barrier method. But I also wanted to introduce another competing method called not competing to this, but it's like slightly different. It's called augmented. So this is the algorithm we had already seen in the previous class. So you should have all of this written in your notes, uh, by the way, uh, because I'm just repeating what we did in the previous towards the end of the previous class. I want to contrast this algorithm with augmented. Lagrangian method and the setting is slightly different. I want to minimize f of x, x is in x, h of x equals to 0. So now I am no longer looking at inequality constraint, I am looking at equality constraint. And I want to do something very similar. I want to create a function so that I can solve a problem of this type and I can get a sequence that converges to the optimal solution as some parameters escape to infinity or escape to 0. So we construct what is known as augmented Lagrangian. denoted by LC 
x lambda And I want to solve minimize L C K X lambda K. Okay. So in the barrier method, we created a barrier around the inequality constraint, and then uh, and then we tried to minimize. Uh, it's not an unconstrained optimization, but this optimization would be much much easier to solve than this optimization problem. So we solve this optimization problem, which is much easier to solve. Get x k, and the fact is x k converges to x star in the barrier method. We try to do something very similar in augmented Lagrangian method. So I have equality constraint here. So what I'm going to do is I construct the usual Lagrangian, but then I add this uh, term for violating the constraint h of x equals to zero, because I don't know what lambda is. Okay. So if I knew what lambda is, what lambda star is, what the uh, Lagrange multiplier is, then I didn't have any issue. Uh, I could have just try to minimize the Lagrangian with lambda replaced with lambda star. But because I don't know what lambda is, I could pick some initial guess of lambda, but then I have to add this penalty term for violating the constraint. So if hx is non-zero, then this term will kick in, and I'm going to multiply it by c over 2. So what do you think should conditions be placed here so that this xk converges to x star? What should we do? In this case, any thoughts? We have two terms here, CK and lambda K. CK should become larger and larger as K goes to infinity. Okay, so I want CK to increase and go all the way to infinity as K goes to infinity. What else? What about lambda K? What should I do with lambda k? So it turns out I just want my lambda k to be bounded. <clears throat> so if my lambda was close to lambda star, if I, if I knew what lambda star is, of course, in a hypothetical scenario, if I knew what lambda star is, I can just replace it with lambda star here, and I can just do the arg minimize, arg, argument of this augmented Lagrangian with CK either being constant, large constant, or CK escaping to infinity, and my life will be much easier. But because I don't know what lambda K is, I'll pick a bounded sequence, not something that's going to infinity, but something that is bounded and I'll let CK go to infinity. So then what happens when CK goes to infinity is the cost of violation increases quite significantly. So when you do this minimization, uh, if the cost of violation is very high, then you 
you tend to be the optimization solution will tend to be on the manifold where hx is equal to zero, and then you will essentially be minimizing this function f because this hx will be zero, this hx will be zero. So you're essentially just minimizing f of x where hx is equal to zero. And notice that this minimization is over this set capital X. Typically, this set capital X is going to be convex set. Okay, so we have studied how to optimize functions over a convex set. So we have a convex set here, and we have a convex set here, and we have come up with a function that we can minimize over convex set, and hopefully that will give us the solution. So here also, the theorem is, or the fact is, CK goes to infinity, lambda k bounded, implies XK converges to X star. Any questions so far? So in assignment four, I have given you a question on augmented Lagrangian. So you will try to solve this augmented Lagrangian by hand, and you will see that this particular limit actually exists in that particular uh, example problem. Um, I have given you an update scheme for lambda k also in that example, in that uh, assignment. So you will update lambda k in a very specific fashion, and you will see that this particular iteration actually converges to x star eventually. And I'll, uh, in that particular uh, assignment problem, I'll also ask you to pick a very large value of ck and try to see what happens when you pick a large value of ck, how does that influence the convergence of the algorithm? So you will see it in action in that assignment problem. Any question? Okay. Uh, so now I want to apply the, we'll, we'll look at some examples of augmented Lagrangian method a little later. I want to solve this barrier, uh, I want to solve linear programming problem using the logarithmic barrier function. Uh, it's an important algorithm because it was uh, it is provably the fastest algorithm or one of the fastest algorithms for solving linear programming problems. And this uh, algorithm was invented in uh, 1984, I think. So not that long back, but it has very good uh, convergence properties. So that's why we want to study it. And it will also tell you how the inner workings of these algorithms are. How do they work? Uh, so it's very instructive to learn how linear programming can be solved with logarithmic barrier function. So I want to solve, minimize C transpose X such that AX equals to B, X greater than equal to zero. I'm going to define my set capital X as AX equals to B. And the barrier function will be this one. So this is same as minus X less than equal to zero. And I'm going to define
So we need to find what the first and second derivative of this function f epsilon of x is. So what's the first derivative? Can someone tell me what the first derivation derivative is? So there is c minus right what about the second derivative what's the second derivative x1 squared 1 over x1 squared and epsilon okay epsilon Top to bottom? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, zeros. Diagonally, 1 by x1 square, 1 by x2 square, up to 1 by x1 square. Okay. Is this a positive definite matrix? Right? Because remember, I'm only optimizing in S where X is strictly positive. So if X is strictly positive, or even if X is not positive, X1 square, X2 square, all of these are positive numbers. So diagonally, it's all positive value. Epsilon is a positive number. So actually, it's a, it's a convex, convex function. F epsilon of X is a convex function. And I'm optimizing, I want to minimize f epsilon of x, x is in capital X. Capital X is ax equals to b. This is a convex set. So I'm solving a convex function over a convex set. How do I solve this problem? What's the, what method would you suggest to solve this problem? Let's try to use uh, Newton's method to solve this problem because we know that Newton's method is fast. Okay, so let's try to use Newton's method to solve this problem. So I'm standing at x uh, x uh, tilde equals to x plus alpha x bar minus x and x bar will be equal to argmin no x is already used x bar is used x tilde is used i need something else x hat not x hat yeah i can use x hat why not x hat in capital X Did I make any mistake? I don't think so. So this is my problem. So I'm sitting, I'm standing at X. I want to figure out what the next iterate is supposed to be. So I need to find out what the X bar is. And then I have to add the step size alpha and get to X tilde. So how do I find X bar? Well, X bar is, I'll look at the first order Taylor series expansion around X because that's where I'm standing right now. I'm standing at X. So this is the first order Taylor expansion. But I want to make sure that my X hat is actually in 
capital X. So I have put this constraint AX hat equals to B. Is this uh, easy to solve? Actually, we have solved it before. Uh, it's a quadratic. So this is a positive definite matrix. Uh, this is just a linear function. So we have actually solved this particular problem in, uh, I don't know, six or seven classes, maybe 10 classes ago. So let me write down what the solution looks like. So x bar is x minus 1 over epsilon x square c minus epsilon 1 over x1 1 over xn minus a transpose lambda and lambda is equal to Uh, the first derivative transpose direction D plus the second derivative D transpose second derivative D. Oh, uh, so uh, right. So the Taylor series will contain F epsilon of X. Well, I can write it, but here is the reason why it doesn't matter. This thing doesn't depend on X hat. So it doesn't participate in the optimization process. If you add a constant to an optimization function, the argument doesn't change. So this is just acting as a constant here because it's evaluated at a point where I'm standing right now. Alpha is here. No. Uh, right, so alpha comes later, right? Well, first I need to find the descent direction. I am not yes. substituting f of x here, no. So this is, what is this? This is basically approximately equal to f of epsilon x hat. x tilde. x tilde, x tilde is here. Oh, x, hat is x hat is the optimization variable here. Yeah, there are too many <laughs> notation here. So x is where I'm standing right now x bar is the solution to this optimization problem, x tilde is what my next point is going to be, and x hat is the optimization variable. This is the variable over which I'm optimizing. So this argument is over x hat. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I can write it as x plus x hat minus x. That's what I'm trying to minimize. And this one, I can ignore it because it depends. It doesn't, uh, it's not influenced by x hat. So this, is, this doesn't participate in the optimization at all. It just acts as a constant to this objective function. Any other question? Okay. Lambda is given by AX square A transpose inverse AX square C minus, how do I make it? This X is big X. Oh, and I have not introduced what this capital X is. This is X1, Xn. We were doing something very similar in affine scaling also. We are solving problem of similar type. 
Okay, so let me show you a picture. So I'm standing here at x. I find this point x bar. This is my x tilde. Right. And this would be my ax equals to b. This is my AX equals to B plane. Perfect. So depending on the epsilon, depending on the C, depending on where I'm standing right now, I get the value of X bar, which depends on lambda and lambda is given by this. Can someone tell me what this lambda is? Yeah. yeah, this is the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to this constraint for this optimization problem. So remember, this is a quadratic optimization problem. Technically, you can use the Lagrange multiplier theory to solve the problem, and you will realize that this lambda is actually the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to this constraint, and it appears in the solution to this problem. Okay, so we know how to solve this problem now by using Lagrange multiplier theory. And because the objective function is convex, uh, whatever first order necessary condition is, is also sufficient for uh, getting to the optimal solution. So X bar is indeed the optimal solution to this problem. It's not a local minima, it's actually a global minima. And lambda is the corresponding Lagrange multiplier pair. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to define uh, some quantities this is just one 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 this is in Rn I define Z equals C minus A transpose lambda And with this notation, x bar equals to x minus capital X Q X epsilon. Right. Yeah, and Q X epsilon. Yeah. So this is the same as that expression. Is that a Q? E is uh, just a vector of one. Uh, this is. Where? Yeah, before the S. This? Yeah. This is Q. Q. This is small letter, capital letter Q. This is small letter Q. Um, what is the X? This Z? This Z is C minus A transpose lambda. So it's X times C. Yeah, this X is a matrix X. It gets multiplied by Z, which is C minus A transpose lambda, and then you subtract E from it, which is just a vector of one. Okay. 
Okay, I can also write Q as X inverse X bar minus X. No, there is something wrong. I think the book has, yeah, the book has a mistake actually, typing mistake. It's X minus X bar. I was right. Yeah, that's what Q of X epsilon is. So you can write it either in this fashion or you can write it in this fashion. It's the same thing. Any questions so far? Sorry? I think I prefer the last one, not the other one. This, you don't prefer this one, you prefer this yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to understand. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Uh, perfect. So I think we found out a few things. Uh, we found out what the first, the, what the Newton step is going to look like for this. Uh, anything we have to be careful about while picking alpha? What should we be careful about? Uh, so 0 and 1 is fine, but something more is required. What's the requirement of barrier method? That the constraint should always be strictly negative, right, throughout the process. So the constraint here is my x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? That's what the barrier function is saying. So I want to make sure that x tilde is strictly positive. So I need to pick alpha so that this term has elements that are strictly positive. Okay? So I need to pick alpha carefully. I can't pick any arbitrary alpha. Okay, so let's see what's happening uh, in a picture. So I'm going to erase all of this, okay? So I have this uh, set, this is my AX equals to B, X greater than or equal to 0. I want to minimize X epsilon equals to argument x in s, f epsilon x. So I need to take epsilon going to 0. So what happens when epsilon is infinity? Uh, so this is arg min c transpose x minus epsilon summation log xi i equals 1 to n. x, uh, I don't know, greater than 0. This argument is over all x strictly positive. What happens when epsilon is very, very large? And ax equals to b. What happens when epsilon is infinity? So then I'm not really minimizing this term. I'm only minimizing this term over this set. X strictly positive, AX equals to B. So I'll be somewhere here. This is my X epsilon equals to infinity. What happens when epsilon is very, very close to zero? So when epsilon is extremely close to zero, 
then I am essentially ignoring this side of the optimization. I'm only minimizing C transpose X such that X is strictly positive and AX is equal to B, which is basically the optimal solution. This is my X star. So this will be X epsilon close to zero, when epsilon is close to zero. Now there is everything in between. I can pick, if I pick epsilon equals to infinity, I'm standing here, this is the optimal solution. If I pick epsilon close to zero, I'm close to the optimal solution. And if I pick intermediate value of epsilon, I'm tracing a path, which is going to look something like this. This path is known as the central path. So this is x epsilon equals to 1000. This is x epsilon equals to 100. This would be x epsilon equals to 10 and so on and so forth. Okay, so I started my optimization problem and I'm standing here at x naught and I'm doing this Newton step. Doing this Newton step, making sure that my alpha is picked at every point of time such that x, the next point x is strictly positive, all entries are strictly positive. And I'm doing a Newton step like this. And eventually the Newton step will converge to the central path, right? Because Newton's method is actually optimizing uh, for that specific epsilon k, it's optimizing the objective function. So I'm taking Newton's step, I'm converging to the central path. After I've gotten to the central path, what should I do? I should reduce the value of epsilon, right? Because I want to move towards x star. So I'll reduce the value of epsilon. So I went from epsilon equals to 1000 to epsilon equals to 100, okay? Now I, have, I need to do Newton's step all over again because now I'm solving for a different objective function. So I'll do Newton's step, I'll reach x epsilon equals 200. What do I do next? I make epsilon even lower. I'll make it epsilon equals to 10. Then I do Newton's step and then I reach this particular point and I'll keep going like this until I reach x star. Okay, I'll never reach x star, but I'll get as close to x star as I want. So that's roughly what the algorithm is with the barrier method for solving linear programming with the logarithmic uh, barrier function. Now the question is, can we do better? So I think broadly we understand what this algorithm is. We are starting from some initial condition uh, and some value of epsilon and then we do Newton's method, we get to the central path, then we change the value of epsilon, in fact reduce the value of epsilon, then do multiple Newton step, reduce the value of epsilon further, do multiple Newton step and so on. And as epsilon goes to zero, I converge to x star. I want to do better. Okay, what should I do? So there are a few questions we need to answer. So the first question is how to pick alpha k. Second question is how to pick epsilon k. Third question is how many Newton's iteration in every step and the fourth question is how to terminate. So these are basically the things we need to optimize in order to get a better algorithm than what we have discussed so far. Yeah. Why do we not directly pick a small value of epsilon for the 
Uh, right, so then the number of Newton step you have to do is quite, hi quite high. You can do that. It's a very legitimate uh, algorithm. The question is we want to pick the algorithm that gets me to the optimal solution in fewest number of iterations. Okay, so the algorithm that you are trying to come up with doesn't quite do that. Okay. But you can always pick epsilon close to zero and you can go through the Newton step and converge to that particular point. That's a valid algorithm. But you will take a lot of different, uh, complexity is gonna be much higher. Because at every point of time, you will have to pick an appropriate value of alpha k. Even if your epsilon k is small, so you don't have to pick this, but you have to pick this, you have to do this, and you have to figure out what your termination criteria is going to be. Okay. So here are three facts. Uh, so the first thing that I want to draw your attention to uh, if you if you were if your x was at central path, if this x was x epsilon, what is x bar going to be? If you started, if you start your Newton's method from this point itself, what is your x bar going to be? Which is the next iterate for the Newton's method? It's going to be the point itself because you're already at the optimal solution, right? So if x was equal to x epsilon, then x bar will also be equal to x epsilon, right? In other words, q of x epsilon is going to be zero if x was equal to x epsilon. So observation, q of x epsilon epsilon is actually equal to zero. What does that mean? It means that if norm of Q of X epsilon or X comma epsilon is, is small, then X is roughly equal to X epsilon. Do all of you agree with this? Do we all agree on this uh, statement? So if I am at x epsilon, then this term is going to be equal to zero. In other words, if my norm of this vector is small, then it means that I'm close to the central path. Okay. So far, what have we, what have we done? We have figured out what the Newton's method is going to do. Uh, we have some knowledge. We can compute this very easily because all I have to do is compute x bar, compute lambda, and then I can compute this particular uh, quantity, x inverse x minus x bar, and I can take the norm of this, and by taking the norm and knowing that it is small, which means it is close to zero, I know that I'm close to the central path. Okay. So here are a few facts, which is what was proved in the 1984 paper. So if xk is greater than zero, axk equals to b, and norm of q xk epsilon less than one, then x bar k plus one is greater than zero. So what should my alpha k be? Q 
can I pick alpha k equals to 1? Right? So I can pick alpha k equals to 1. So one less thing to worry about. If my q of x k epsilon is less than 1, then my x bar k plus 1 will be strictly positive. And so I can pick alpha k. Actually, x bar k will be strictly positive. So if I pick alpha k equals to 1, my x k plus 1 will become x bar k. So if I start with a point where xk is strictly positive and this norm is less than 1, then my first, if I take one Newton step, that number is going to be strictly positive. And so I can pick alpha k equals to 1. And so my next iterate is going to be x bar k itself. Now fact 2 is xk is strictly positive. Axk equals to b norm of q xk epsilon k is less than or equal to gamma. And I pick epsilon k plus 1 to be 1 minus delta over square root of n epsilon k, I pick my delta I think square root of n is probably not needed. I pick delta less than or equal to gamma 1 minus gamma over 1 plus gamma. Then I think it should be x bar k. Yeah. And then fact three. Which is x k greater than zero. A x k equals to B. less than 1. Okay, so I'll just write down these three equations. Okay, so here is the algorithm. So I start with x naught. I get close to the central path. At the, at the very beginning, I need to get close to the central path so that my this value is, my this value is strictly less than one. Once I reach there, then I know that my x bar k will be strictly positive. So I can pick my alpha k equals to one and I'm going to get uh, I'm going to set xk plus 1 to be x bar k. Now I need to figure out, so my alpha k part is done. I'm able to pick alpha k equals to 1. Uh, now how do I pick epsilon k? 
Well, it turns out that if qxk epsilon k is less than or equal to gamma, so I really want gamma to be less than 1, gamma here is less than 1, then there is a way to pick epsilon k plus 1 so that this statement holds. Okay? So the distance of x bar k uh, to uh, x of epsilon k plus 1 is also less than or equal to gamma. Okay, so I, I figured out a way to update epsilon k and then all I have to do is just do one Newton's iteration, right? So at every point of time I'll do only one Newton's iteration and then the termination criteria is suppose I want to, I want to reduce the value of epsilon k, so remember this is how I'm changing the value of epsilon k, so I want to go and reduce the value of epsilon k to the extent that the solution to the, the difference between the current solution and the optimal solution is less than or equal to this particular value. So if I want to get to a tolerance level of 10 raised to minus 6, then I want this to be 10 raised to minus 6. Let's say n is equal to 100. So this is 110. So I want epsilon k to go all the way to 10 raised to minus 8. Okay? So I want to keep running this iteration all the way until this term becomes 10 raised to minus 8. So I got the termination criteria as well. So the way this algorithm works is as follows. The first time I start from x0 and I do some Newton's method, I get close to this particular place. Uh, to the central path. So this becomes my x1. And then I change the value of, this would be my x epsilon 1. This is x epsilon 2. And then starting from x1, I'm going to do only one Newton step. And I will reach here. Then I will change the value of epsilon uh, 2 to epsilon 3. And then from here, I will just do one Newton step and I will reach here. So this will be my x2, this will be my x3, x epsilon 4, this will be my x4, and so on. So, I'm, so except for the beginning, at the beginning I have to take multiple Newton step, but once I get close to the central path, then I only have to take one Newton step, change the value of epsilon, another Newton step, change the value of epsilon, another Newton step, and that's the fastest algorithm for solving linear program. I mean fastest at that point of time. I'm sure by now there are many improvements to this algorithm. But in 1984, it was a breakthrough idea. So remember we had talked about manifold suboptimization method. Uh, so manifold suboptimization method had a worst case I think the worst case performance is n raised to 6, like it needs n raised to 6 number of iterations. Uh, in this case, I think it is x n raised to 3. So you only need n raised to 3. In the worst case, you need n raised to 3 number of iterations to get to x star. So that's the benefit of this algorithm. I don't know what the current best algorithm is. Um, in practice, uh, when you are solving this problem by MATLAB or some other method, uh, you can pick which method you want to use to solve that particular problem. People tend to use both simplex method as well as the manifold suboptimization method as well as the barrier function method for solving this problem. So it really depends on what application you have. Okay, so that uh, completes, concludes the discussion on the barrier method. So in the next class, we'll talk about augmented Lagrangian method. Thank you.